Good afternoon. I'm Jay Jarvis. We're breaking into programming to bring you Governor Ron DeSantis' news conference about state preparations ahead of Tropical Storm uh, later Debbie. this evening. Let's listen in. And it will make landfall in the state of Florida tomorrow uh, as a hurricane, most likely as a Category 1 hurricane, but it could potentially be uh, even stronger. Current maximum sustained winds are 65 mile per hour. Uh, we anticipate it could reach uh, 85 to 90 mile per hour sustained winds. This is a track that's very similar to the track that we saw 11 months ago with Hurricane Idalia. Uh, it is though, while similar track, uh, going to operate uh, and have much different effects than Idalia did. Idalia was uh, close to a Category 4 hurricane. Uh, it had uh, strong winds that, that ripped through the Big Bend area, uh, caused uh, a lot of damage, a lot of debris. Uh, this storm uh, will not have winds that reach the level of Hurricane Idalia, uh, but it is going to produce way more water uh, throughout the northern part of the state of Florida. And we are looking at um, potentially really, really significant flooding uh, that will happen, particularly in north central Florida as this storm uh, makes landfall in Florida and then heads northeast across southeast Georgia uh, or southern Georgia and northern Florida. So the message is make sure you're executing your plan now. Uh, as the storm comes, uh, you may see you may get hit with an awful lot of water, a lot of rain. Uh, there may be immediate impacts that you see, uh, but you could also see flooding that happens uh, days afterwards after the storm passes. Uh, do not go into flood waters. There could be dangerous debris. There could be down power lines. And please do not drive your vehicles through flooded streets. The number one way we have fatalities as a result of floods is people trying to drive through the flood water. So it is a hazard and please heed that uh, uh, advice. We have requested a uh, federal disaster declaration and that has been approved, our pre-landfall declaration by the federal government, of course. It's mostly a monetary thing, helps unlock some additional funds uh, for, for certain things uh, that we wanna do. Uh, we have, at the state level, constructed more than 9,400 feet of flood protection devices to support critical infrastructure against flooding impacts. So for the first time, Florida and its partners are deploying these flood control barriers around utility substations as a best practice to ensure power is maintained throughout the storm for as many Floridians as possible. When we saw Hurricane Ian, the substations that were higher up weren't impacted by the water, made it much easier to effectuate power restoration. Uh, and so our hope is here to mitigate the power interruptions uh, as a result of this storm. We have 3,000 service members from the Florida National Guard that are on standby to assist with the state emergency response. And that will include search and rescue, route clearance, commodity distribution and protection of critical infrastructure as needed. Uh, Florida National Guard has 10 rotary aircraft and over 400 tactical vehicles that are, sustained, that are staged to support relief operations. We've also activated the Florida State Guard and we have over 100 soldiers ready, nine shallow water vehicles, 10 UTVs, and two amphibious rescue vehicles. Uh, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission has prepared their full fleet of airboats and John boats, uh, and we have 12 swift water rescue teams. Uh, power outages will occur, so people should be prepared for that, uh, particularly if you're in the, the main path of this storm. Uh, there is gonna be power outages. Now, uh, Working with Florida's power companies uh, at the state, uh, we have identified up to 17,000 linemen that are ready to go in and restore power when the storm passes. Now they'll do that as soon as it's safe to do that. Uh, remember Hurricane Idalia, it was a very rapid restoration. Hurricane Ian, same thing. So we understand the importance of getting the power back on and Kevin is working with uh, the local uh, communities. I was able to speak with the mayor of Tallahassee earlier today and I told him, and he wasn't mayor then and I wasn't governor, I said, you know, Hermine came, I think it was 2016, and it was, I think, a category one. And there were people without power for weeks in, in Tallahassee. 
And, and we don't want to see that again. And so he agreed. He's already talking with uh, FPL and some others to accept mutual aid. And we want to be helpful with that as well. Of course, Florida Department of Transportation, the cut and toss, uh, clear the roads. But also, if they need to clear things to be able to help with power restoration, they're going to do that. Uh, but that was a learning experience, I think, for the state and the city to see how the Hermine was. Uh, and, and, and that's not going to be acceptable uh, going forward. And so I'm glad that um, the mayor and I are on the same page on that. Uh, we also have on hand for this storm statewide, almost 11 million bottles of water, almost 33 million shelf stable meals. We have pre-staged uh, 670,000 bottles of water, uh, 287,000 shelf stable meals, 3,600 sandbags, and nearly 14,000 tarps uh, in the various parts of Florida where we expect the most significant impact. As I mentioned earlier at our briefing, the Florida Department of Transportation has staged resources in secure locations in proximity to the protected path of the storm for quick response. So 1,200 generators to support traffic signals and emergency power needs for our transportation system. Pumps, hundreds of pumps that are staged and available to pump out water as needed. And that may very well be necessary in, in a lot of different areas of the state. 230 pieces of heavy equipment and trucks for cut and toss operations, 120 bridge inspectors, 120 cut and toss crews to qu uh, swiftly clear state roads and interstate from debris, and 150 additional crews to assist with various emergency response efforts, including damage assessments, flooding, and traffic signal restoration. Uh, FDOT has been clearing roadways and shoulders for the last few days. Uh, the Department of Management Services has issued state office closures on their website. To see if your place of employment is closed today or tomorrow, visit dms.myflorida.com, dms.myflorida.com. Florida Department of Health has deployed 117 emergency vehicles to support emergency evacuations and patient transport as needed. Staging is currently in Jackson and in Marion counties. Uh, the Department of Health is also collecting information for those who may have or care for individuals with special needs and may seek assistance. Uh, and you can sign up for that at snr.floridahealthresponse.com, snr.floridahealthresponse.com. Uh, the Florida Department of Environmental Protection has pre-authorized 850 disaster debris management sites for the 61 counties under the state of emergency to temporarily stage storm generated debris. Uh, now, is the ex now is the time to exercise your disaster preparedness plan. Uh, the storm, we're already seeing impacts in, in southwest Florida. We're going to continue to see impacts across the west coast of Florida, uh, but it is going to, the eye of the storm is going to hit the state of Florida tomorrow. Uh, so execute your plan. Uh, if you have been evacuated to, if you have been ordered to evacuate by your local officials, you know, please heed that call. And when you're evacuating, you don't have to drive hundreds of miles. There are shelters within, within each county. Uh, they have, uh, every county has a pet friendly shelter. Uh, there's folks, there's accommodations for people with special needs. Uh, so, so heed that advice and make sure you're protecting yourself. Um, now, if your plan is to just simply hunker down in your, your home, um, then, then, then just do so, and that's fine. And I think the, the winds, uh, Category 1 or even 2, most homes in the state of Florida are going to be able to, to withstand that. Uh, pets, I mentioned, there are pet-friendly shelters, but please make sure they have what they need to ride out the storm. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we're not leaving any pets behind. Uh, it's never safe uh, to walk or drive in flooded roadways. As I mentioned, uh, there are hidden dangers. There are potentially downed electrical lines. So please do not mess with that. Do not try to drive in it. Uh, this stuff subsides. There'll be pumps. There'll be a bunch of things that will be happening. I know people want to kind of get out. They got things to do. They want to check on things. But uh, it is hazardous, and we want to avoid uh, any loss of life with this storm. Generators. Make sure you properly use generators. Uh, we have had in the past, although not in the more recent storms, I think because there's been an emphasis on this messaging, uh, but you cannot use a generator inside your home 
or inside your garage. Uh, it will produce ca carbon monoxide that can kill you. Uh, so make sure a generator is positioned outside your home uh, and that the exhaust is not coming inside your home. So please, if you using a generator is fine. People want to have power. Uh, I get it and, and, and do it, but just do it in a way uh, that's going to be safe. So please do not have uh, your gasoline engines inside your home and make sure they are uh, in use, not just outside, but at least 20 feet away from your home. Home. Emergency alerts can save lives, so please have multiple ways to receive those alerts and act when you receive them. Uh, listen to your emergency management officials at your local level. Uh, they're going to have information specific to your part of the state of Florida. Uh, and if you want to find that emergency management information, you go to floridadisaster.org backslash counties. So this is a similar path to what we saw last year with Hurricane Idalia. It is going to be much wetter. Uh, we're going to see much more inundation across, uh, really across uh, the northern part of the state north of I-4, but particularly in north central Florida, uh, you're going to have the potential for some, some significant flooding. That creates hazards, that creates risk. Uh, so, so please uh, take care of yourself. Heed the, the warnings that, that you receive at the local level. Uh, we have uh, a, a whole host of resources that are staged and ready to go. And if there's somebody that's in harm's way as the storm passes, we have search and rescue that will be there. Local law enforcement will be there. Local emergency response. Our National Guard, our Fish and Wildlife. Uh, there's all hands on deck for this. Uh, so execute your plan. Uh, we're going to work as soon as this storm passes to get the power back on uh, and to help the Floridians uh, who may be in need. And with that, I'll turn it over to Kevin. Thank you, Governor. Pre and, and as always, I appreciate your leadership and support for the Division Emergency Management. Uh, Tropical Storm Debbie is expected to continue to rapidly strengthen into a hurricane before making an early morning landfall here in the Big Bend tomorrow. Um, it is not outside the possibilities, as the governor has already said, as a strong Cat 1 hurricane, maybe even a low-end Cat 2 hurricane. Uh, we continue to work on requested resources from counties, but many areas have already begun to feel the storm's impacts. We have been getting information from south of Tampa Bay all the way down to Fort Myers and Naples uh, that there is storm surge of about two feet. Uh, that they have had several inches of rain and we're seeing those impacts down there. We are now starting to see more impacts come into the nature coast, Hernando, Citrus, Levy, Dixie counties. So again, the storm is here for them, which leads me into the next piece is if you are in the nature coast, getting ready to come into the Big Bend, it is time to effectuate your plan. You need to be locking it in, locking down, do not get out on the roadways. Make sure that you're staying indoors. So please make sure you're doing that. If you're in Northeast Florida, North Central Florida, you still have some time, but those hours are starting to wane. So please make sure you're doing what you need to do. Whatever you decide to do, make sure it's best for your family and you must do it now. If you're ordered to evacuate by local officials and there are several evacuation orders in place, please remember you only have to travel tens of miles to those shelters. You do not need to travel all the way across the state. Do not leave your pets behind. There is at least one pet friendly shelter in your area that can travel with you to that shelter. Make sure you have uh, the leashes and carriers and plenty of food and water for your pets. If you are sheltering in place, identify a place in your home away from windows and external doors where you can safely shelter. If you're on the coast, you need to go ahead and move to the second floor. We are starting to see areas where they may receive upwards of six feet of storm surge. If you're unsure about the next steps of what to do, please contact your local emergency management office, or if you're in this situation where we have um, incidents happening right now, call your 911 office. Your yard should be debris free at this point if you're in North Central Florida and you're in Northeast Florida, the uh, capital region. Again, if you can pick it up, you need to put it up. We will continue to emphasize the important, uh, this next important point, which is it's never safe to walk or drive through flooded roadways. Not only can it cause accidental drowning, but floodwaters are gross and unsafe and can contain many hazards. So please, please make sure that you are not um, messing around in those floodwaters. Make sure you have fresh batteries in your supply kit and a hand crank weather radio so you don't miss any important updates from your local officials. 
I will go back and talk again about the generator safety. We have been doing a great job since Hurricane Ian on uh, the fatalities related to generators have gone way down. You've already heard the governor talk about 20 feet away from an open door, an open window. I'm going to finish the, the second 220s, which is if you have to refuel, make sure you shut your generator down for at least 20 minutes. So 20 feet away from any open door and, every, and an open window. 20 minutes to cool down and then go ahead and spend twenty dollars and get a carbon monoxide uh, detector those are the things that we want you to follow on the 2020 20 rule as it relates to generators be sure that you follow the agency on x and instagram at flsert and on facebook at fdem as we continue sharing important information to Florida, Floridians looking for resources or preparing uh, and getting all your state updates, you can go to floridadisaster.org slash updates for additional information. And again, Governor, thank you for your leadership. Now, as you look at the, um, you know, the track of this, uh, it is obviously going to impact Florida somewhere in the Big Bend region. Could move a little west and be more heavy Tallahassee. Could go more on the Idalia track, uh, but it is going to cut across uh, towards uh, the Atlantic coast. Now, right now, the most likely scenario is it dumps even more inundation in Savannah and Charleston and, and Hilton Head and that part of um, of South Carolina. But it is possible that the storm actually turns around and comes back through. Uh, I-10 in northern Florida go in the other direction. That's possible. May not be likely right now, but that is one of the solutions that they're looking at. So um, this is not necessarily going to be something that just passes and then we don't see any effect. You can continue to see flooding and you may even see a rebound of the storm. That's possible. Uh, so, so just be prepared that that could happen. Watch for updates. Uh, there's going to be another update on the track by the National Hurricane Center at the 5 o'clock advisory. Uh, and then, of course, tomorrow uh, we're going to see the, the storm make landfall here in Florida and then begin to meander uh, northeast uh, from the coast. And it's going to move likely pretty slow, uh, which is not really what you want because it allows the storm to churn and to dump more water uh, throughout the region. So, so it's going to be wet. We're going to have a lot of inundation that is going to present hazards and it's going to present challenges, uh, but uh, we will respond uh, appropriately and uh, we have everything staged uh, th that we wanted to have staged. All right, with that, I'm happy to answer some questions. Uh, this path, uh, focusing on similar to what Dahlia was last year, financially constrained counties, these people have gone through the tornadoes recently. I guess what's your message to these people that seem to can't catch a break right now? Well, look, th this is um, Mother Nature. Is, is It's not always fair what happens. Uh, clearly, we had issues in Tallahassee with the more recent uh, tornadoes. Well, you know, we'll see how much this storm is impacting. Of course, if it's a direct hit on Tallahassee, you're going to see a lot of debris. You're going to see a lot of wind. And you have some people that are still trying to get their homes repaired from the tornado. So that presents real challenges. Um, if it ends up going more east, you're going to end up seeing a track over some of the places that were the most hard hit with Hurricane Idalia and Taylor, uh, Dixie counties. So, so that's going to create uh, challenges. But uh, we responded then and, and, and got people back on their feet, uh, and we will do that again uh, with this storm. Uh, there will be impacts because of the wind. It is going to be a hurricane. Uh, I don't think that there's any models that suggest it's going to be as strong as Idalia was in terms of the wind. Uh, but every single model you look at say it's going to be much more significant uh, than Idalia was with respect to the inundation and the amount of water uh, that is going to be dumped throughout the region. So, so that is going to create uh, challenges and um, we're going to work with the local communities to meet the challenges. All right, we will have another update um, probably tomorrow morning because I think we'll get the five o'clock advisory. Um, and as Kevin said, make your make your plan and execute the plan now. Uh, we're already seeing some of the outer bands. Uh, we're seeing stuff that's happening on the west coast of Florida. Uh, but we're going to see uh, this is going to be a multiple day event in terms of the amount of water it's going to hit the state. 
And that was Governor Ron DeSantis issuing an update on the state's preparations for Tropical Storm Debbie. He says the state has already requested federal disaster declaration and it has been approved. And he's urging Floridians in northern Florida to be vigilant, careful and start executing their preparedness plans as they are anticipating significant extensive flooding with this storm. The Florida State Guard has also been activated and FPL crews are on standby to start restoring power after any outages once the storm passes. Be sure to join us tonight for WPBF 25 News at 5 for the latest update on the storm. We'll see you then.